Exposition is what filmmakers use to tell us viewers more about the world of the movie, to establish the rules of that world and give us important information for the rest of the film. If done well, the audience won't even notice the exposition, but fail and it will be glaring. The audience hates blatant exposition. After all, exposition is rather dull. It doesn't progress the plot or strengthen our characters in meaningful ways. It is, however, oftentimes necessary. Before a daring heist is attempted, we must be told the plan. Or, if the movie's set in an alternate world to ours, we want to learn a little about it before the ball starts rolling. Back to the Future, aside from being a phenomenal film, delivers its exposition perfectly to the audience, and thus there is zero frustration involved. How does it accomplish this? Let's find out. Okay, so first off, the filmmakers convey as much exposition as they can visually, as opposed to having characters say it. Take the first scene, for example. The clocks tell us time is a main theme of the movie. Since it's about time travel, you know, we're also shown that plutonium has been stolen from some research facility. This makes us think about how this might be relevant to the plot, and indeed it is. The plutonium will turn out to be the substance that powers the DeLorean's flux capacitor. Back to the Future is full of such subtle exposition. For example, we're shown a campaign truck in one shot for Mayor Goldie Wilson. This turns out to be the waiter in the diner in 1955. What? You're George McFly. Yeah, who are you? Say, what do you let those boys push you around like that for? Well, they're bigger than me. Stand tall, boy. Have some respect for yourself. Don't you know if you let people walk over you now, they'll be walking over you for the rest of your life. Look at me. You think I'm going to spend the rest of my life in this slop house? Watch it, Goldie. No, sir. I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to night school. And one day, I'm going to be somebody. That's right. He's going to be mayor. Yeah, I'm going to... Mayor. Now that's a good idea. I could run for mayor. A colored mayor, that'll be the day. You wait and see, Mr. Carruthers. I will be mayor. I'll be the most powerful man in Hill Valley, and I'm gonna clean up this town. Good. You can start by sweeping the floor. For exposition that can't be just shown visually, Back to the Future has another jack up its sleeve. It's vitally important for Marty McFly to know that the clock tower was hit by lightning in 1955 because he will use that energy generated by the strike to travel back to 1985 in the end of the film. But instead of having a character say, Hey, remember when in 1955 a lightning struck the clock tower? The filmmakers go for a more subtle approach. The filmmakers are very well aware how annoying exposition can be, so they fully embrace it. Right before Marty and Jennifer are about to kiss, a nosy lady comes up to them asking for a donation. Terrible. Save the clock tower! Save the clock tower! Mayor Wilson is sponsoring an initiative to replace that clock. Thirty years ago, lightning struck that clock tower and the clock hasn't run since. We at the Hill Valley Preservation Society think it should be preserved exactly the way it is, as part of our history and heritage. There you go, lady. There's a quarter. Thank you. Don't forget to take a flyer. Save the clock tower! It is in this manner that we learn about the clock tower strike. Marty and Jennifer are both visibly annoyed and this sort of makes us accept the exposition more because we're shown that it's normal to be annoyed by it because the people in the world are also annoyed by it. The film is making fun of itself in a way. Plus, the exposition here is very subtle and at first you might just take it to be a joke. Something that's less subtle is the story of how Marty's mom and dad met. Like the way I met, like the way I met your father. That was so stupid, Grandpa hit him with the car. It was meant to be. Once again, it's important that we know this story so that once Marty goes back in time and messes it up in 1955, we know the consequences. He's a peeping Tom. <laughs> Take him in the house! Mom? Is that you? Uh, there 
Once again, this exposition is saved from being annoying to us because the children are also visibly and audibly annoyed by the story. They've heard it countless times. Furthermore, the mother telling the children the story serves a dual purpose. First of all, it shows us that she's um, not exactly the most eloquent or interesting conversation partner, but it also delivers this exposition for us. The whole scene flows so naturally that we don't even stop to consider it. The exposition is delivered and commented upon in a way that feels natural to the characters. And once again, it's all very tongue-in-cheek, which lends itself to the movie's tone. That being said, I would wager that audiences in general are more likely to accept exposition if the film doesn't take itself too seriously. So, what can we learn from Back to the Future in terms of delivering exposition? First, convey as much information as you can visually and let the audience try to figure out what it means. Second, be subtle. Audiences hate on the nose dialogue, but they hate on the nose exposition even more. And lastly, self irony helps. By having the characters themselves be annoyed at the exposition, the filmmakers are telling us in a tongue in cheek manner that this is exposition and they need it for the story to make sense, but one shouldn't take it all too seriously. But that's just my opinion. What do you think of Back to the Future's exposition? Let's have a discussion in the comments. I hope you learned something in this video or found it at least entertaining. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to Stargazer Movies. I upload short films and video essays just like this one every Saturday. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you're enjoying your summer, even though that might be a little difficult with the coronavirus restrictions at the moment. I hope that's going your way. Until then, have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Well, Jennifer, Marty, don't go this way. Strickland's looking for you. If you get caught, it'll be four targets in a row.